SB 54 is not anti-law enforcement. It is pro-community safety. It is so important that we provide the safe haven for our community so that they can feel that they can report. This issue of underreporting is a serious issue, and we have to be concerned about that. As a result of what we are seeing, I did introduce Assembly Bill 578, Immigrant Protection, uh, the Immigrant Protection Act, which provides protection for our immigrants so that they can report when they are witnesses or victims of a violent attack. We, I have also introduced AB 1268, which creates a domestic violence and sexual prevention fund. As a proud co-author of SB 54, it's my duty to go back to the community and to make sure that the community is not getting information that is incorrect. For organizations that advocate for providing aid to victims and increasing prevention efforts, your work has been very important. For those who have been victims of domestic violence and sexual assault, your voices have never been more important. Your courage, and your courage encourages others to speak up and to be advocates. As mentioned earlier, I am a, pro, pro, I am a proud co-author of SB 54, which was introduced by Senate Pro Tem Kevin De Leon. And as I indicated earlier, it's to help ensure that our communities are safe, safe for all people. The rhetoric currently being used in Washington is a result of fear, hate, and bigotry. Contrary to claims made by Donald Trump, his threats of mass deportation have had a negative effect on our communities. This rhetoric has led to the underreporting, as mentioned earlier, of serious crimes from witnesses and victims of criminal activity who are unsure if cooperation with law enforcement will lead to detention and deportation. SB 54 is a pro-public safety bill. We need our limited public safety resources used to make our communities safe, not to be used to backfill the resources of ICE or any other federal agency. An article in the Los Angeles Times elaborated on how fewer Latinos are reporting crimes of sexual assaults due to the fear and distrust of law enforcement. That's not the society I want to live in. And that is why, as mentioned earlier, I did introduce AB 578, which increases the punishment for the crime of witness intimidation when it is committed by threats to report the immigration status or perceived immigration status of a victim, a witness, a family member, or a victim, or of a victim or witness. We must let perpetrators know that any type of intimidation, especially regarding deportation threats, will not be tolerated. Some of the crimes have been the most underreported, have been the crimes and cases of domestic and sexual violence, as, we meant, was, as was mentioned by my partner from ACLU. This, this issue is not a new one, as approximately 40% of California women experience physical, intimate partner violence in their lifetimes, and 20% of women will be a victim of sexual assault. AB 1268, mentioned earlier, creates a domestic violence and sexual assault prevention fund. The fund's pr purpose is, a support, is to support innovative prevention strategies that incorporate cross-movement collaborations and community-informed approaches to address these very serious issues. Again, I want to thank you. I want to thank the partners who are advocating and being the voice for the many victims that couldn't be here today. Together, we can create a better California where our children and families can live free from violence and intimidation. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to continue to support the California Values Act, SB 54. Thank you.